Hello, this is Sound Out here, and welcome back to Sound Out's Marvel Legends Rundown. Last year, around this time, I decided to do a long video going over the entire year of 2017 Marvel Legends, as I basically started heavily collecting the line last year. Uh, this year, there was even more Marvel Legends, and I decided, let's do it again, and let's give it a show title. So the Marvel Legends Rundown, the basic format here, if you did not catch the 2017 video, uh, which you can check out anytime on my channel, uh, what we're going to do is go through each Marvel Legends figure released this year, including ones I didn't buy, and grade them off of a scale of 5. Now, I'm not going to grade the figures I didn't buy, simply because I don't have them. I can't judge something if I've never owned it. So, because of that, uh, it's going to be relatively complete uh, to have a history of the year, while also having my reviews of that which I purchased, which you can see here. Uh, so there's a total of 130 Marvel Legends released in 2018. I believe that is the most amount of Marvel Legends in a single year, but don't quote me on that. I haven't counted up other years. I know it's certainly more than last year, uh, especially since we were given a secondary subline with the Marvel Studios 10th anniversary. So I purchased a total of 80 Marvel Legends this year. Most of the ones I skipped were Comic-Con exclusives, Marvel Unlimited exclusive, and most of the MCU figures. Uh, this year, there was so much coming out, I had to get a little picky, and I basically only picked up a handful of MCU figures and called it a day. So, without further ado, we're going to get started. Uh, the way we're going to do it is just like last year. Uh, we're going to start with the Build-A-Figure Waves, then we're going to run into some sublines with the Ultimate Riders, then we'll go into exclusives, multi-packs, all that stuff. I've got a list, I'm ready to go, we're ready to do this, I just have to take all these guys off the table, and start focusing on individual ones. And at the end of the video, we'll do a top 10 Marvel Legends of the year, uh, which is gonna be tricky because there's a lot of good ones. So, without further ado, we're gonna start off with the Okoye Build-A-Figure Wave. All right, first up we have Black Panther from the movie Black Panther. Now this is his new suit that he gained in the movie, and it's a completely new mold from the 2016 Black Panther from the Captain America Civil War Giant Man Wave. Now this figure in particular, I think is absolutely fantastic. Uh, he's got extra range of movement in the shoulders, all the articulation you could ever want, pushing it before with the uh, butterfly shoulders. Uh, alternate head sculpt is pretty decent, plus some extra hands. Really great figure, five out of five. We have Eric Killmonger in his Golden Jaguar costume. Uh, this is the first Killmonger figure released. Great figure, uh, has the butterfly shoulder joints. I think maybe used some parts from Black Panther, not exactly sure. Uh, this is the depowered version. It was a powered up version later. Uh, and it does not include an unmasked head, which kind of takes it down a notch from Black Panther, uh, especially since he's got the we he's got the weapons, but an unmasked head would have been really nice. So I'll only give him a 4 out of 5. Here we have Nakia. Now, Nakia is a great representation of the character, but there is a few shortcomings. Uh, her legs aren't colored correctly, so it does look like she has bare legs as opposed to having uh, dark brown pants. And overall, I think the face sculpt could be tweaked a little bit. It's not perfect Lupita Nyong'o, but it's pretty close. Overall, still a stellar figure at a 4 out of 5. Moving to the comic side of the wave, for whatever reason, it's got three comic figures that are all white guys and have no true connection to Black Panther, but you gotta get them to get Okoye pieces. Uh, first up is Black Bolt, King of Adelan of the Inhumans. Now, he's a perfect counterpart to the Medusa that was released at Walgreens last year, uh, in which this guy came out about a month later. Uh, this way, uh, actually, around the same time in some areas, but for the most part, transitioned into uh, January was the street date. Anyways, this is a re-release of the figure from the Thanos Imperative box set from 2013, I believe. It was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, same as Medusa. But he has been repainted in a more classic bluish black, and now includes this new head sculpt that has a nice energy effect and a screaming expression, which is really cool. Overall, this is a great way to re-release a character without having to do too much new work to it. Uh, it gives new fans a chance to get Black Bolt, it gives old fans a chance to get something new, so it gets a 4 out of 5. Here we have Namor. Now, a lot of people have been wanting classic Namor. The previous Namor released was the more modern costume where he's got, like, clothes, uh, which is great, and I love that figure, but there is always that need for a classic Jack Kirby-style Namor, and that's what we have here. The Kirby-esque head sculpt is awesome. This is definitely more of a, you know, Namor to go with your Fantastic Four, less so than your Namor to go with your timely comics characters, if that makes any sense. Uh, he definitely looks good. He comes with a bearded head that I put on the, the uh, Walgreens figure, which looked really nice. And overall, his articulation scheme is really good. And he's got this new 
kind of body that is, well, it's a naked male body in a sense, since he's only wearing a Speedo, uh, which does open up for characters like Weapon X, who's coming out next year. Um, overall, really great figure, really great classic interpretation of Namor, 5 out of 5. Here we have the Invincible Iron Man, a controversial figure for the wave. Again, third white guy from the comics side. Doesn't mesh well with the MCU and Black Panther's representation of African culture. However, uh, this is a really nice Iron Man, in my personal opinion. I do like it. It's a neat armor. I've been wanting a new uh, comic-style Iron Man since we've been getting so many Iron Man figures over the years. There's a lot of MCU figures. Um, there's like four more this year that I didn't even buy. Um, but this is an Iron Man I wanted because it's um, a more modern comic design and that kind of fits with my shelf. Uh, the neoclassic armor that got re-released in the Vintage Wave I found to be kind of a lackluster figure and too small. So this one kind of blends in nicely, I think, with the other Avengers I have. Um, so this is a really nice thing. A couple drawbacks, but he does have an unmasked head. So a 4 out of 5. All right, here we have the Build-A-Figure the Wave Okoye. Yes, we got another MCU character. It's normal size, releases a Build-A-Figure. This happened with Mantis last year. Happened with Okoye here. Luckily, you only had to buy five figures. Uh, Black Panther, Killmonger, Nakia, uh, Black Bolt, and... Namor. You didn't have to get the Iron Man, which is awesome because this happened a couple times this year. We had Iron Man's in the waves, but it was the bonus figure. You didn't need it for the build a figure. So those that are tired of buying Iron Man, like me, uh, don't have to buy him. That being said, Okoye is a fantastic figure. The head sculpt, I think, is so accurate to the actress herself that it gives off this kind of almost eerie vibe of this is a small Okoye uh, from the movie. Articulation's great, she's got a couple different weapons, and overall looks fantastic. And I cannot wait to get the Dora Milaje to go with her, and I'm actually considering taking Okoye, plus a couple Dora, into my comic shelf to go with Black Panther there, as they can kind of make the transition a little bit better. Um, overall, Okoye, one of my favorite MCU characters, and absolutely a 5 out of 5. Moving on to the Lizard Wave, we have one of my most anticipated Marvel Legends I never thought would happen, Spider-Punk. Spider-Punk is one of my favorite alternate versions of Spider-Man to ever exist in the comics. He is awesome. He's a punk rocker. He's, you know, not an alternate Peter Parker, but instead an alternate universe Hobby Brown. Uh, he is awesome. I, I love this character. And I love this costume design so much. And getting this figure was a dream. It was on my wish list. I have a wish list of Marvel Legends figures that, you know, probably will never get made. Like the other Ghost Riders that aren't Johnny Blaze. But like, this was something I really didn't think would get made, but... As the Spider-Verse kept going along, I had a little bit of hope it would happen, and he was done perfectly. He's absolutely a 5 out of 5 figure. He's got alternate hands to play his guitar. He comes with a guitar. Uh, he's also got normal web-slinging hands and unique shoes, which should have probably been on the Into the Spider-Verse Miles Morales that came out. But, you know, semantics aside, I love this figure so much. Thank you, Hasbro. This is something I've been wanting for, like, four or five years now. Oh, Gwenpool. You're not a character I hardly know anything about, nor particularly like that much. Uh, my biggest exposure to Gwenpool was in the Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 game, where she talks a lot, constantly, just slightly obnoxious. She's also blowing out the white balance of my camera, there's just light hitting that white, and she's reflected back. That being said, I need to get her for a lizard piece to get the tail, and I still don't know nothing about the character... I have really interest in anything that involves her creation, and I'm still giving her a 5 out of 5 because uh, she's a really good figure. She's got alternate hands galore, she's got extra heads, she's got her swords, she's got great articulation, she's even got a couple extra joints that normal female Marvel Legends don't have, like, you know, two different, three different joints in the ankles. Despite not liking the character all that much, this is a really good figure. So, yeah. Also, that smartphone, that, that just that's just easy, easy picture fodder. What Spider-Man wave is complete without another classic Spider-Man villain to add to the roster? And here we have Mysterio. I'm so glad he came out this year because with him being the villain of Spider-Man Far From Home next year, I imagine we're only going to see MCU versions. We're not going to see another comic version. And we don't need another comic version. This Mysterio is darn near perfect. And I say darn near. Uh, the biggest, I think, problem with the figure is that the dome and the cape are all one piece. And it does restrict his articulation that way. Because the cape comes down, it looks really nice, but it doesn't have any movement. And it kind of just ends up popping off. 
Now, the coolest part of this figure is that it came with these smoke effects, which are all um, mystical and Mysterio, and behind the dome, if you actually get the cloak off, is this really cool head, which uh, you can't see very well because of the light, but it's a skull with a, with a tentacle going through it, which is just awesome. And when you have the dome over it, it looks fantastic. Early releases, I'll pick up that effect later, uh, early releases had a green head inside, which I don't think worked as well. The white head is definitely the better version. And right now with the light, you can't even see that there's a head in there. Uh, it's awesome. I love this Mysterio. He's darn near perfect, but that cape does hinder some of the poses he can get into. So he only gets a four out of five, but I absolutely love this figure so much. Here we have all new, all different Spider-Woman. This is the first costume change for Jessica Drew, and once she got this costume in the comics, she instantly got pregnant. Weird time for the character. I kind of stopped reading when she got pregnant because it kind of happened after Secret Wars and Secret Wars kind of put me off Marvel for a little bit. And anyways, point is, things got weird and I kind of forgot this figure happened. Uh, it wasn't until I was checking my list that I actually noticed that, oh yeah, she wasn't in that big crowd shot that I did earlier. Um, this is, this is making me feel bad, but nevertheless, here she is. Uh, decent figure. Um... The previous Spider-Woman was okay. It used the Black Cat mold, which made her really big. Um, and she had the cool wing things, but, you know, it was like you kind of restricted her arms. She couldn't move too much. And really, like, this figure can't do a whole lot. She doesn't have any web effects. She doesn't have anything cool. Um, mine even has a knee joint that's out of place. The goggles come off, which is neat, and it's a cool-looking costume, and I can have, you know, original Spider-Woman with the Avengers and this Spider-Woman with the Spider-Verse, but... That's still like a midline three out of five. Spider-Man Noir was one that was on my list of wishes, but I knew would happen because he's a high profile alternate Spider-Man, including being in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse this year. But that being said, uh, the figure does have one limitation, which isn't displayed here. It's his cape. He's got the same, not the cape, but the coat. A long jacket that's been on Nick Fury figures forever. It's been around since like 2012 that nobody likes because it restricts all the articulation, is tight and doesn't move. That coke. I, if you've collected Marvel Legends at all, you definitely own it at least once. And it's not the, you know, we're, we're going to see it again in this video. That being said, I did transfer the cape, uh, the, I keep wanting to say cape, uh, the, uh, the, the, the coat onto my custom Red Skull which we'll talk about later, uh, and this figure just gets instantly better. But because the coat is there, and because he only has one holster but comes with two guns, he gets a four out of five. That being said, he's still a fantastic Spider-Man Noir. So here's Prowler. Now, Prowler is the second Hobby Brown to be in this wave, ironically. Um, uncle to Miles Morales and Into the Spider-Verse features him. So it kind of makes sense for this figure to come out this year. It just was time. Uh, he uses a body mold that I think was used for Spider UK. Um, it's a very unique one that hasn't been used a whole lot, and his cool clawed hands are really nice. But he does have the cape from Moon Knight, which means he still has the restrictions that come from the cape from Moon Knight. Can't get him into low crouching poses at all. His legs are very restricted because that cape is just too long. Like, it hits the ground when he's standing neutral. Uh, this is the thing that I think Marvel Legends needs to work on, is getting capes to be a little bit shorter so you can get some range of movement with those characters. Um, I know DC Universe Classics has a lot of capes, and all of them don't restrict the leg movement that much, aside from a couple exceptions. Now, this is the one thing Marvel Legends, I think, needs to work on is the capes, and just kind of getting them a little bit shorter so that the figures can get a little bit more range of movement. Other than that, Prowler does get a four out of five. Here we come to the most boring figure of the wave, Lasher. Uh, he's got the Spider-Man head that's just a Spider-Man head we've seen before, I think, from the Scarlet Spider I'm looking at in the background there. Uh, he's got the Superior Venom mold. That's it. He's just green Superior Venom with the Spider-Man head. Not very exciting, but very accurate. So it slips him out of a, you know, lower range, and he gets a 3 out of 5. Here we have the belt of figure of Lizard. This guy's awesome. Uh, I know a lot of people wanted a more classic head. I'm fine with the more reptilian one. I love the long tongue. It's very dynamic. Uh, some of the drawbacks of this figure is, for whatever reason, his leg joints are terrible. Like, they don't hold his weight. They don't hold poses very well. I also, but I do like a lot of the sculpting detail. Like the ripped shirt looks really cool with the scales underneath. Uh, the articulation's really good, actually. Uh, plus the articulated tail is super nice. This may not be the lizard that everyone wanted, but it's certainly a lizard that I wanted. And when it comes down to my scoring, it's gonna be based on my preferences. 
Um, he does have a few drawbacks that do make him a hard figure to score high, but I'm going to give him a 4 out of 5. Um, somebody in the looks department for most of it. He looks as a lizard, he looks like lizard, and he fits in the shelf as lizard. So we're breaking tradition here with the Thanos wave, as I only got two figures. First up is Proxima Midnight. This is, of course, Proxima Midnight of the Black Order for Thanos. Uh, this is a character I wanted to get because I wanted to collect the Black Order, not necessarily for MCU purposes, but more so for comic purposes. And I do really like this figure. She isn't a perfect representation of the movie design, as she's kind of based on more concept art, but it seems like all four of the Black Order figures are doing that. Um, that being said, she's fantastic, she's super tall, she's got double drained elbows, all the articulation, like, when I say she's super tall, uh, here's your standard, you know, female Marvel legend. Actually, that's not standard, that's, that, that's X-23, she's on a smaller mold. Uh, here's a standard female Marvel legend, like, she is still really tall, and a normal priced figure, which is nice. Uh, so, really cool, really awesome, definitely a 5 out of 5. Here we have Marvel Legends Songbird. Now, this is a character I don't know a whole lot about. I know she used to be an Avengers villain and became a hero at some point. Um, and I've seen her in some Dark Avengers stuff, or Thunderbolt stuff. Anyways, point is, she's an Avengers character. She's a comic character. Uh, she looks cool. Um, I picked her up mostly because I like that effect piece on her. I found her on sale, and I totally think if they ever make a new Jean Grey, maybe in the Jim Lee armor, that would be a perfect effect piece to go with her if they don't include it when they do make that figure. Um, this is really nice. It's really looked good. She was a fan vote winner. Um, again, don't know all about the character, but figure-wise, I'm going to give her a 4 out of 5. Now let's talk about the rest of the Thanos wave. I did not get the MCU Thanos, neither here nor in the 3-pack. I chose to go for the SH Figure Arts, which is what you see here. I wanted a Thanos. I knew that. I just didn't want to buy most of the figures. I wasn't interested in more Captain America's or Iron Man's or even the Iron Spider. He didn't include the legs. But let's run this down for a second. So we have the uh, Mark 50 Iron Man, which looks like a decent figure, uh, just wasn't interested in Iron Man. We have the bearded Captain America, which I don't think looked that great. Hair color was wrong. It didn't look like Chris Evans as Captain America. It only included one shield, I think, and has like a weird mismatched one hand is gloved, one hand is not. Um, so, you know, it was that. Uh, the Iron Spider, like I said, didn't come with the legs. I really would have liked to seen the legs because that would have given me a reason to get it. I think without the legs, it just kind of didn't feel like a good figure if I wasn't getting Thanos. Uh, we had Taskmaster, which I was happy with the modern one, and we had uh, King Cobra, which I'm not interested in the Serpent Society. So the rest of the way was kind of a wash for me. In fact, for the longest time, it was just Proxima Midnight and nobody else. Uh, I got Songbird on sale for the effect. Um, but I got this Figure Arts Thanos, which is absolutely fantastic. That's a whole different topic for another day if I ever decide to talk about it. But yeah, that's pretty much why I didn't get most of the Thanos wave. So, starting the Sasquatch wave, we have Deadpool in his famous X-Force costume, the gray and black that was even homaged in Deadpool 2. Good looking figure, it's based on the modern Deadpool mold, with some changes. It's similar to the Hascon version, minus some accessories, and it does include a Build-A-Figure part for Sasquatch, which is kind of the only reason I got him. Uh, he does not that ex exciting, really. Uh, he has trouble holding his weapons because his hands are super loose. So I'm going to give him a 3 out of 5. Um, I know a lot of people were waiting for this version of Deadpool. I was not particularly asking for it, but, you know, I have it now. So, you know, 3 out of 5. Here we have Domino, my most wanted figure of the wave, the one I picked up, like, almost a couple months before anybody else. Uh, absolutely fantastic. She looks like Domino. She exudes the character. She has a more modern costume, but comes with these Liefeldian crazy guns. Uh, I personally don't mind them that much for Deadpool characters. I kind of don't like them for, say, like an Avengers character. Um, but I, I think they work. Uh, they're not the goofiest weapons ever. Uh, there's some goofier ones that come with the AIM soldiers, for example. But I uh, I do really like this Domino, and her head sculpt, I think, is one of the best. And it's actually multi-purpose, because it got used for the Vintage Wave Wasp. Who knew? Uh, Dead Domino, for me, gets a 5 out of 5. I know some people would score lower, but for me... 5 out of 5. This is their first Legends, too, so there's really nothing to compare to. Here we have Cable. This is the 90s Cable. Very Rob Liefeld. Uh, it looks really good. I do like this figure. His giant guns are awesome. Uh, he does have some limitations, though, due to being the nuke mold, uh, but overall he's really good. Uh, it wasn't one I was going to pick up initially because I was really happy with the modern Cable, but the more I looked at it, I was like, I kind of want, like, modern Cable to hang out with the X-Men and then this Cable to hang out with X-Force. And I would need a Sasquatch piece, so it all worked out.
Anyways, really cool cable, uh, really great 90s throwback. A four out of five. All right, here we have Laura Kinney, X-23, the clone of Wolverine, in her first Marvel Legends figure, I think. Or there was another one and it sucked. I don't remember. I don't know Legends as well as I wish I did. Um, a lot of past stuff I didn't collect it, so I, I can't remember sometimes. There's been so many. Point is, uh, this one is the X-Force costume, which matches some of the X-Force stuff we've gotten before. Um, would like to see new X-Force Wolverine on the new body. That's a side note for another day. Uh, but I do really like this figure in a way. Um, the head sculpt here that you're seeing is actually the unmasked one from the X-23 Wolverine version, which we'll talk about later in the video. Uh, I can't find the original head, but I didn't like the original head too much. She had a snarling feral look, but it was kind of like goofy and it didn't, I don't know, something didn't work for me. Um, eventually I did get the figure to get the Sasquatch piece. I'm happy I did. Um, but overall, it's a decent figure, but it has some shortcomings, I think, in the facial sculpt, which I'm not talking about because it's the wrong head on here. I'm sorry. I just couldn't find the other one. Three out of five. Below 100% new tooling, Deathlock. I love it when Hasbro goes all out and provides us a completely new mold. This isn't the last time this happened this year, too. It's awesome. Deathlock is fantastic. I would definitely give him a five out of five. No question. Um, going in specifics, his sculpting detail is excellent. The mechanical parts are awesome. The gun he comes with is amazing. Heck, even the barrel turns on here, which is completely pointless, but it's there. It's an option. You can remove the ammo belt if you want. He's got the cool backpack that the aim soldiers steal later. Deathlock's awesome. I can't recommend him enough. He's amazing. That's all I gotta say. Here we have Paladin's body. So, uh, I didn't want to get Paladin. I don't know a single thing about the character. I don't think he's connected to Deadpool in any way from that I could tell from research. It's also really, really bland. He's like a bland, bland looking figure. Um, as you can see, I've no longer kept him as Paladin. Uh, I took the Red Skull head from the Iron Skull figure, the trench coat from Spider-Man Noir, and a gun from somebody else I can't remember. I don't know. And I made myself a Red Skull. Now, yeah, sure, Red Skull's not known for wearing purple and black a whole lot, but guess what? Red and purple are two colors that work well together. Look at Onslaught. So, you know, I went with it. This is my custom. It's from my universe shelf, and this is the best Red Skull I've seen, because, I don't know, the other ones kind of suck. So, I'm happy with this one, and that's the end of the story. Paladin still gets a 1 out of 5, because I just, ah, that figure is just not... I mean, that figure was so undesirable to me that I not only bought it to get the Sasquatch piece, but I made it into another figure without ever documenting what its original form looked like. You can Google it if you want. Sasquatch was the last Build-A-Figure I finished this year um, because it took me a while to put them together. Uh, like I've talked about, X-23 Wolverine and X-Force Deadpool and Cable and Paladin, I, I just slept on them for a while. Domino and Deathlock were the ones I kind of got earlier. Um, but once I finished Sasquatch, I actually really like them. Uh, the reason why I did this was because I noticed that they're making Guardian for Alpha Flight next year, and there's another Alpha Flight stuff that's being talked about, hopefully with a re-release of Puck. I don't want to make it so that I have everybody from Alpha Flight but Puck. Anyways, I was like, okay, Alpha Flight's happening. Might as well get in on it with Sasquatch. And here he is. I actually really like the figure. Um, he's really cool. He's not just a Man-Thing retool. He's got some man thingness on him. But that's not a bad thing. I like Man-Thing. Um, overall... Really nice. Can't wait to see him be redone in Windigo next year because I really like Windigo more than Sasquatch in a way. Just because I know him through the Hulk stuff. But Sasquatch gets a 4 out of 5. The one figure I didn't get from the wave was the 90s Deadpool. Part of it was because I already got a lot of Deadpools. I got like 5 of the dude. I'm pretty much set. I and mean, there's a bunch of red suited ones too. And there's another one coming out in the Vespa later. I didn't find any need in my collection for the 90s Deadpool. He didn't come with any cool accessories. It's just two little swords. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to skip them. If I run across them at a convention someday for like 5 10 bucks, maybe I'll get them. But not worried about it. He didn't have Build-A-Figure parts, so I was like, you know, whatever. I don't need another Deadpool. Moving on to the Cole Obsidian wave, let's talk about the two characters I did buy from the MCU. Ant-Man and Wasp, obviously based on Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, these two figures are ones I'm really anticipating because I love the first Ant-Man movie. It's my favorite MCU movie of all time. Has not changed. Um, and I was really excited for the sequel, and I wasn't let down by the sequel, I just still love the original more. Um, that being said, I never had the original Marvel Legends Ant-Man simply because it didn't look like the movie, so I was like, I'm gonna skip it. Um, I never picked up the Yellow Jacket 2-pack, just because I didn't, 
Finding Need 2. I had pop vinyls of those costumes. This Ant-Man, best costume I think Ant-Man has had in the MCU. Um, definitely looks amazing. Um, the Paul Rudd head is very expressive. Really love that. The Evangeline Lily head for Wasp is really expressive, and I love that too. Um, the Ant-Man could have used maybe some different hands to kind of vary up his posing ability, but Wasp is near perfect. So I'm going to give Ant-Man a 4 and Wasp a 5. Here we have Black Knight. Black Knight is one of two comic figures for this wave, and he looks awesome. Uh, this is a figure I wasn't initially getting, but then when I decided to get Cold City, and after they announced Corvus Glaive and Ebony Ma, I was like, okay, I need Black Knight. And he's awesome. Like, I love this figure. Uh, he uses some parts from Green Goblin, which is smart because of the chainmail look. Uh, he uses some parts from a couple other figures, I think. But overall, he's really cool. Uh, I love the mismat uh, the mass the mashup of parts to make this happen, plus three new heads for three different helmets and three different looks of Black Knight are awesome. Uh, I love the cape. The cape is short enough that he can still have dynamic leg posing. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about here. Uh, so overall, I love this figure. Five out of five, no doubt. Here we have Malekith the Accursed, the other comic figure of the Cult Obsidian Wave, also being a re-release from the 2017 uh, Battle for Asgard five-pack. I'm really glad he was re-released because I did want a Malekith. And it's also good to have more Thor villains. Um, definitely a cool figure. Not necessarily one that I was, like, hunting desperately, but once I did eventually get him, I really like him. He's really cool. Um, that being said, he does have a couple drawbacks. He's only got the one sword. Not much dynamicism to him. So I give him a 4 out of 5. Um, I also, this mold is starting to get a little weird. Um, but yeah, still, 4 out of 5 for Malekith. Here we have Cole Obsidian of the Black Order, or Black Dwarf from the comics. Uh, this is based on concept art, once again, like Proxima Midnight, where Proxima Midnight was a lot closer to our final design. Cole Obsidian is completely different. Uh, he's not even close to the comic design, so it's kind of like a weird, you know, mixture figure. But that being said, I don't think we're going to get another Black Dwarf slash Cole Obsidian in Marvel Legends for a very long time, if ever. So I'm glad to have him. Uh, he did turn out as a really nice figure. I, I think he's great. Um, he's balanced really well despite having smaller feet than usual. He's super tall. Like, this is a huge Build-A-Figure. Um, like, you compare it to some of the other ones we've gotten. Like, he's bigger than Apocalypse, uh, which is awesome. Uh, he was one of the hardest ones to track down. Some weird distribution with this wave. In the early days, he they came up more later. Um, I skipped the Thor and Black Widow, which I do want to talk about here. I only skipped them because it was after the point where I decided I'm not going to collect MCU figures anymore. I've got an MCU, Thor and Black Widow. I'm, I'm just I'm backing away from the MCU game, but I did want Cole, so I did end up buying his parts on eBay. Because um, the Thor and Black Widow, if they were cheap and easy to get, oh yeah, I would just gone for them, but they weren't, so I went for the parts. Um, I'm really glad because this figure looks awesome. He looks great with Proxima. Can't wait to get the other two members of the Black Order next year. This is going to be a cool team when it's put together. Here we begin my favorite wave of the year, the Apocalypse Wave. Starting with Tiger Stripe Wolverine, a variant of Wolverine so many people have been asking for and couldn't wait for. And I couldn't either. I love the suit design. It's like the earliest memories of Wolverine is the 90s X-Men cartoon. I know that's said a lot, but it really is there. I think I was introduced to X-Men through the movies, to be honest, and then the 90s cartoon followed. It's like the movies had that iconic of costumes. They're just black leather. Uh, this is this is iconic Wolverine for a lot of people, and yet he's not my main Wolverine on the shelf. Uh, this is one I got, you know, Apocalypse parts. But this is the one I got because first of all, I collect Wolverines. I have all the six-inch Wolverines in the new body style ever since the Juggernaut wave. But he does not stay as my main comic one because I keep the the brown suit vintage wave one because he matches the. The 80s Cyclops became a Dark Phoenix. That's kind of like, you know, my, my Wolverine and my Cyclops need to match for my display. Everybody else can be just whatever, but those two need to match for me. But here's the thing. If I feel like interchanging this, this matches perfectly with the Warlock Wave Shin Lee Cyclops. They're perfect together. I can swap these two in, and I can pull the other 80 one, 80s ones out, or whatever. It works for me. Uh, these are kind of like my representation of X-Men the Animate series more so for sentimental reasons, while the other ones are kind of more my comic representation. Since I really I, I really find Brown Suit Wolverine to be the most iconic look for him in the comics. But that being said, this figure is absolutely fantastic. Five out of five. Here is Storm. Now Storm is a character I've never had a Marvel Legends of. The only Storm figure I remember owning is one from the original 2000s X-Men movie, um, which actually was kind of cool. It lit up and she had like a cool display base. But 
This storm is the punk rocker look from the 80s, uh, one that I didn't have any sentimental attachment to, and yes, I would have preferred either the modern black costume or the classic silver, black, white, whatever color you want to say it is, from the 90s, um, or even the Chris Claremont run storm costume, whatever. This is a really good storm, however. I think that, you know, Hasbro wanted to put out something different because the last storm they released was the modern costume, it was a Toys R Us exclusive that got pulled for whatever stupid licensing reason, and most people couldn't get it, and that figure goes for a, over $100. Hasbro said, okay, we know there's a bunch of collectors that have that storm and have paid a lot of money in recent years to get it because of the lack of X-Men figures in general. We don't want to screw those people over, but we want to be able to give them something new and also provide a storm to the market. And this, I think, is the perfect costume to do that with. Yes, I think 90s Storm is still going to happen. They're building out that 90s roster. We're almost there to an X-Men number one cover with Marvel Legends. Another Storm is going to happen, but for now, I am definitely happy with this one, and I am not going to complain about any more Storms. She's one of my favorite X-Men characters, and having this figure means a whole lot because it's finally, she was attainable. She wasn't in some multi-pack or some crazy thing. She's actually an obtainable figure. And she still gets a 4 out of 5, uh, simply because lightning effects are kind of weird and don't work really well with the figure. Here we have all new, all different Magneto. Uh, once again, Magneto last was released in the Toys R Us wave that shall not be spoken of, and I'm really glad to get a Magneto. The red and black costume, while not my preference, I still prefer purple and red, looks really good. Uh, the effect parts kind of work with him here. Um, the purple hands I thought were kind of weird. I'm actually using them for another figure, which we'll talk about later. Uh, and the unmasked head looks very classic Magneto, so I totally see that getting reused somewhere. Um, definitely still want to see a classic Magneto, but until then, this is a nice variation. Um, plus, with all the different versions of the X-Men that we're getting, uh, I can kind of build out multiple displays. Have, like, this Magneto hang out with some different characters than another Magneto. So, options. I like options. Here we have Psylocke. Now, Psylocke here is in her ninja costume. She's in her Asian body. Um, this is not the body she's in anymore. She's gone back to her British self. Uh, but this is still the most iconic Psylocke to ever exist. By far, um, that's without a doubt. This figure is really great. She's got cool effect parts, not only with the sword and the energy dagger, but also one for her face, which eh, it's in the parts bin somewhere. I kind of leave, like to leave the face open. Um, now there was two versions. There was a black-haired version and a purple-haired version. I got the purple hair. First figure I picked up of the wave. Um, absolutely a five out of five. She's fantastic. Here we have Multiple Man. Multiple Man is definitely an army builder, though I haven't picked up any more just because he's not ever gone on sale. Still a really popular figure, and I've made sure that other people can get him for the Apocalypse piece. Uh, he's really cool. He has three different heads, which is perfect for multiple man. You can kind of get three different multiple mans and have different heads on them, which is awesome. I would have liked some open hands, but otherwise I can't really knock this figure for anything. The trench coat here is actually made of a softer material than the Spider-Man Noir and previous releases, so it doesn't impede his articulation, which I'm hoping is the case for the Gambit coming out next year. Overall, multiple man is really fantastic, and what more can you include with multiple man besides extra heads? So, 5 out of 5. Here we have Jim Lee Sabretooth. Previous Sabretooth was a Wolverine wave in, I don't know, Return of Marvel Legends at some point. I don't remember exactly. It didn't look that great. It was a modern costume, wasn't as cool. Being said, it's the same body mold, same hands, different head, and the new collar piece makes it total Jim Lee 90s Sabretooth, um, which is awesome. I love this design. It actually works as a modern Sabretooth, too. It kind of blends together however you want. I think this is a more definitive Sabretooth. Some people said it's not exactly 90s. Yeah, 90s animated series took a little bit of liberties with the design. I definitely think this works perfectly as the comic version. I'm very happy. I don't need another Sabretooth. I'm good. This is this covers it. Here is Apocalypse. Apocalypse is one of the biggest, hottest figures of the year. And I absolutely love him. He is... Okay, so Apocalypse, a lot of people are like thinking back to the Toy Biz Apocalypse, which was like 16 inches tall. It's like, here's your giant Apocalypse. I didn't really want that. I wanted kind of a bigger than average body size for Apocalypse, and this is what I got, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's definitely bigger than the Toy Biz normal size Apocalypse, and it's, uh, I think, a nice scale for everything. Plus, he's got some customization ability. If you remove his collar, you can give him a different look. Uh, he does have this claw, which came from Archangel, uh, which isn't part of the wave, but a separate release we'll talk about later. And he looks really cool. Uh, I really think that this is probably my definitive apocalypse. I don't see myself needing another one. Um, so, good job, Hasbro. I, I'm really happy with this. Five out of five. Starting off the SP slash slash DR wave, or spider wave, I'll be referring to it for the rest of the video. 
is the all-new, all-different Daredevil. I've had a few Daredevils. This is my third one of, well, fourth one, if you include the Netflix version. I didn't necessarily need another Daredevil, and I wasn't super excited for this figure, but having it in hand, the new boots and gloves are awesome. The effect piece he comes with is weird and hard to pose, but it's cool that it has the rope for his batons, and actually he looks really cool. Uh, this is the Daredevil that will live with my Defenders part of the shelf, while the other Daredevil lives in the Daredevil part of the shelf, because that's a thing that happened. Marvel Legends is funny that, type, that way. But overall, four out of five. Here we have the most famous dead girl in Mar I mean, Elektra. Uh, she finally got made. I feel like we've been waiting forever on this, mostly because Daredevil came out in Hobgoblin Wave like three years ago. I don't know. Maybe I'm just the only one that's been asking for Elektra, but she's the perfect counterpart to Daredevil, and to go with Bullseye and, you know, the upcoming Kingpin, it's gonna be a nice little Daredevil shelf, so really happy to see her. Five out of five. Now, while I had the original release from the Return of Marvel Legends line, I was not happy with the previous Scarlet Spider Kane version. This is a Scarlet Spider Kane version. Using the new Sunfire body mold, I love this figure. He is absolutely a perfect embodiment of Kane. The only weird part is he does come with the Cosmic Spider-Man's unmasked head in weird dead pale colors, I guess, to be dead no more Kane. But uh, other than that, really cool. I like the spikes in his hands, and I love this body mold. It's my favorite body mold in the whole line. So definitely cool. I'm going to give him a 4 out of 5. Would I like to see like a normal bearded cane head? I guess I could just swap in the one from Cosmic Spider-Man. But, you know, I have to rate the figure on what it comes with, not what I can do once I have the figure. House of M Spider-Man. I have... I don't, I don't know what to say. Came with this cool web line that they came with the PS4 Spidey as well. Um, what was my score? Two? Two's a little kind. I I didn't see a need for this to exist. I know we need a regular Spider-Man, but I thought, you know, Kane could do the trick. We could have gotten something else, maybe? I don't know, this one just seems like a cop-out. We can't have a Spider-Man away without a classic Spider-Man villain. This one is Dr. Octopus. Or Doc Ock. Finally, this is a figure I've been asking for for a while. I've wanted a new Doc Ock to get made. He's absolutely perfect. I really have no complaints. Definitely a 5 out of 5. He does, he does not come with a part for Spider. Instead, he comes with the tentacles. I think that, you know, some people did mention that, oh yeah, there's no bendy wires in the tentacles, there's no way to pose them. But because they can all be interchanged, I found that I didn't really have a problem with posing. I think it looks cool with him having kind of like two out, two over, and also alternate it. Uh, whatever fits in your display. I think this works best for my display, uh, just because I can kind of put all the other Spider-Man villains around him. And he looks super cool. Um, definitely a recommendation. A lot of people I know just picked up this figure and skipped the rest of the wave, which is totally an option. Um, but definitely, definitely the highlight for me for this wave. Uh, five out of five, for sure. Now, I'm not exactly sure who's taller, Spider or Colobsidian, but Spider is pretty dang cool. Um, I really like this figure. Uh, now, Spider, for those that don't know, is an alternate universe uh, Spider-Man uh, named Penny Parker. Uh, she is a Japanese teenager who was gifted a robot from her father as his last wishes. Very Japanese super robot -y. Um, and the design is inspired by Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, probably the last time you hear me say those words from this channel for a while, because I'm not a big fan of Ava. That being said, the SP slash slash DR is a cool looking figure, and I do really like it. Uh, this wasn't one of the most interesting characters to come out of Spider-Verse for me personally. I was surprised to see it she get released as a Build-A-Figure. I knew she'd have to be a Build-A-Figure, but, you know, be released at all. 100% new mold, really cool. Some articulation things kind of hold the figure back in a way. Um, and the balance is absolutely terrible. It's not got good balance. But, you know, four out of five for sure. I definitely want to pick up the end of the Spider-Verse spider to get the Penny Parker figure for this one. Because that'd be a cool little addition. But anyways, that is this wave. Last two figures of this wave are Cloak and Dagger. Now, personally, I don't own these, as my dad was the one that wanted these as two of his favorite Marvel characters. And I just pretty much got the Build-A-Figure pieces from them. He has the figures. I think they look cool. I like the fact that Cloak has a separate body that can be removed so that Dagger can step through the Cloak. Overall, they look cool, but they are in my dad's collection. Here we have Venom, the Monster Venom wave for definitely a tie-in to the Venom movie. You know, Hasbro couldn't make any figures for it. I think they said because they weren't sure it was going to have an R rating or not, uh, which it didn't, PG-13, but they made this really cool Venom wave. Um, now, if you don't like symbiotes, you might want to skip over this wave and maybe stop at the spider ham, but we're going to start off with Venom. Now, this is mostly the Venom from the Absorbing Man wave, which uh, basically was a really good Venom. I really liked it. It was very Todd McFarlane-inspired. 
Um, he did have a head where it was like closed smile teeth and tongue. This one is smiley teeth, no tongue, plus a cool new uh, collar piece and an Eddie Brock head that's way too big and looks ridiculous and I don't like it. But overall, four out of five. Next up is Carnage. Of course, Carnage would be in a Venom wave. Carnage was one of the most popular characters in the Ultimate Green Goblin wave, this body seen here, and is one that's really hard to find nowadays for a good price. So it's really good we got a new Carnage. Plus, this Carnage has a new axe hand, a new claw hand, an unmasked Cletus Cassidy head, and a uh, effect piece that actually sticks up in the air, as opposed to this one. I keep this one, this one's from the Green Goblin, this is the Green Goblin body with the Cletus head from the new one. This is the new one with the piece, the back piece, from the Green Goblin wave just because he fits in the shelf better. But overall, brand new Carnage, really great. Um, joints are tighter, paint's a lot cleaner now. Um, there was some weirdness with this figure, uh, personally, but... Uh, I don't know, I don't never need a Carnage again. We're good, Hasbro. We're good. You can just repack this one in a two-pack of Venom every couple of years to keep, you know, new new collectors, give them a chance at it. I don't need new Carnage. I'm happy. I'm a five out of five. Here is Scream, the second of the Life Foundation symbiotes to be released this year. Uh, the other one being Lasher. Hopefully we'll see more next year. Really easy to do. They're just repaints. Uh, Scream's really cool. She uses kind of the standard female body, but gives her, like, the giant Carnage hands. And this really cool head... Uh, which I like the giant red down the back. Um, really cool stuff. I know there's some paint inaccuracies uh, to comic design, but overall I do like the figure. Uh, nice four out of five. Here we have Typhoid Mary, another character I never expected to get a figure of, one I didn't even know really existed that much in this costume. I think I've heard of Typhoid Mary before, but she's not super prominent. She was recently given a miniseries event in Marvel, right around the time this Marvel Legend came out, in this costume, so a little convenient timing there if I... Don't say so myself. Um, Typhoid Mary has nothing to do with Venom and symbiotes. She's, you know, this lady that can breathe toxic stuff and get people sick. She works for Kingpin. That's a Spider-Man connection, I guess. That's why she exists. I think she was just a precursor to Kingpin coming next year. Other than that, yeah, that's that's the Typhoid Mary connection. Um, nice figure, though. I'll give her a 4 out of 5. Um, and some parts I definitely see will get used for an Emma Frost down the line. Um, yeah. Weird, weird choice, though. Another weird choice is Poison Spider-Man. So the poisons are symbiotes that eat symbiotes. Or like an anti-symbiote thing, but they're not like anti-vent. I didn't read Venomverse. Not a lot of people did, including the guy that wrote the bio on the package. But this is Spider-Man possessed by a poison symbiote. So there's your Spider-Man for the wave. Problem is, knowing nothing about this character, really, and this being a really bland character to begin with, he still gets a 4 out of 5 for being a nice figure. Like, what the heck? It actually turned out really good. Peter frickin' Porker, the Spider-Ham, has a Marvel Legends figure. And as a fan of the character, I give this figure a 5 out of 5. As an action figure reviewer, I give this a 2 out of 5. He's fantastic from the waist up, but the fact that his waist, his articulation below the waist is just this, kind of sucks. Also the fact that he they sculpted the web lines instead of painting them, which makes it inconsistent for the other Spider-Man. He's a perfect Peter Porker, but he's an inconsistent little figure. Um, he does come with a cool accessory, which is a pork grind head, which fits on this other Venom I have laying around now that I got the new one. So, hooray! Two figures for the price of one, if you have another figure. <sighs> yeah, poor guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's a two out of five. In my heart, he's a five out of five, though. Now, a five out of five in my heart and in my soul is Monster Venom. There's a lot of weirdness about the Venom wave. Not going to deny that. Is it all worth it for this Build-A-Figure? I'd say so, yes. If you want a giant hulking-sized Venom, and I mean he, he's like massive. It's like part of the reason why Spider-Ham was a $20 figure is because he came with that torso. Um, he's massive. He's absolutely great. He looks awesome. I love the head sculpt. He's Matt Gargan Venom inspired, which is neat. Uh, Hasbro, make a scorpion, please. Um, oh No, I just, I really love him. He's pretty. He's got this shiny purple paint. He's just... Monster Venom. I think Hasbro or Marvel or somebody, whoever whoever made this happen, like they just got an addiction. I got an addiction to symbiotes now. That's bad. It's like bad. Because I'm going to keep buying them because they're going to keep making them. This figure's awesome. This figure's too awesome. Sauron Wave starts out with casual Deadpool. Weirdly enough. Um, Sauron Wave kind of cheats by being a half X-Men Wave, half Deadpool Wave. Uh, it's technically Deadpool Wave 2, but, hey, you know, here's a Deadpool. 
Um, now, like I said, I got plenty of Deadpools. This is one of them. <laughs> this is one of the funniest ones. To, to look at this figure a little bit better, yeah, he is wearing boxer shorts with Deadpool hearts on them, and he's got his bare legs and then, like, one sock and some slippers, and... <laughs> This is one of the funniest action figures I own, and really I can't take any points off of it. He comes with two guns, which I gave to Black Widow, and he's got a very unique body sculpt, and he's a very unique action figure. He gets a 5 out of 5. Fight me in the comments. Here we have X-Men Deadpool. Now, I'm not using this as a Deadpool. I'll pop the Deadpool head off and put this Madcap head on, because he came with this Madcap head and hat, and he's kicking it in the box, and it's hilarious. But this is the closest we're getting to a Madcap for a while, I think, so... Here we are. I think I put the hat on backwards, but here we are um, with Madcap. I have to fix that because I noticed the top of the hat, and it's just I can't I can't have it. Anyways, there's Madcap. Uh, yeah, this figure is kind of lackluster. It's kind of neat to see a base X Men body, but it's still got the little red for Deadpool, so it kind of you can't use it for anything. It's got the Jin X Men logo. Three out of five. I make a Madcap Hasbro. Don't just make this. Please make a Madcap body. Don't just make a body. Include the head again. I don't mind buying it. So, another Deadpool. This time a lady. Lady Deadpool. I figure I'm surprised it hasn't been made yet. But here she is. She looks great. She's got a bright red color, which is really nice. And she comes with Headpool, who has his own stand. And, actually, is a normal Marvel Legends head. So you can plug it onto a Deadpool body if you'd like. I probably will, because there's an extra red Deadpool that's going to be floating around after that Vespa comes out next year. Overall, Lady Deadpool gets a... Uh, what is it? What is, what is my numbers? Am I losing tracks? I'm doing too many things at once. Four out of five. Four out of five. Now, this is what I was waiting for. This is the X-23 Wolverine. I loved it when Laura Kenny took over as Wolverine. It was poetic. It was awesome. Return of Wolverine has reverted her back to X-23, which uh, puts me in a bad spot. Cause I like Wolverine. But I like Laura as Wolverine. But I like Logan as Wolverine. Can't they both just be Wolverine? Like how we had Barry Allen be the Flash and Wally West be the Flash and then they killed off Wally West? Never mind, never mind. If she gets to live and be X-23, that's fine with me. Okay, anyways, uh, fantastic figure. Improves on everything the previous one. Head sculpt's great. The unmasked head's a little large, I think. So I kind of like to prefer this one. Um, she's casting in godly light rays from the heavens. But overall, Wolverine, X-23, 5 out of 5. The sun sets outside the window. The sun sets in the future because Bishop is here to try to change his doomed future. He's also a great figure. Uh, really nice body mold. Um, it's, well, it's the, it's in the century body. It's getting a little worn, but he's got a really cool gun. Holsters in his bag. Really cool head sculpt with the wavy hair replicated perfectly. And that purple hand didn't come with him. That came with the Magneto from the Apocalypse Wave. I just put it here because it kind of gives a little bit of a, you know, idea for Bishop's powers. I think those purple hands work better for him than they do for Magneto. Overall, Bishop does get a 4 out of 5. Possibly one of my most anticipated figures of the Sauron wave was Omega Red. Omega Red's a villain I've had a weird connection to ever since I remember owning a figure of him back in the day, not knowing much about him, um, and, you know, actually learning about the character later on, oddly introduced through the Marvel anime Wolverine series. But Omega Red's really cool. I really like him. He's on a new body mold, a new bigger, thicker body mold that I wish the new Venom was on. He's got, you know, butterfly shoulders. He's really cool looking. He's awesome. He's got alternate tube options. I love this Omega Red, and I'm really happy with him. Five out of five. I bought two extra Deadpools to get this guy, because Bishop, Omega Red, Lady Deadpool, and X-23 are all ones I wanted. Casual Deadpool and X-Men Deadpool I would have normally skipped if it wasn't for Sauron. Sauron is absolutely one of my favorite Marvel Legends of the year. Definitely my favorite build figure by far. This guy just got executed perfectly. I don't care if he used a torso from a 2012 Amazing Spider-Man lizard figure. I don't care. It works perfectly for him. He looks amazing. And look at all the light castigating through his wings. Plus the wings fold. It's awesome. Like, Sauron is one of those characters that only ever happens once in a blue moon in toy form because of all the logistics behind it. And they managed to pull this off in the same year they did Lizard and Apocalypse and Sasquatch. And I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy with this figure. Of course, it's a 5 out of 5. He's in my top 5 of the year. Top 3, probably. I just love him so much. He's so perfect. Let's talk Marvel Legends Vintage. Last year's Vintage Wave, I ended up only getting Iron Man and Punisher during the year. Got Wolverine later. Uh, and then this year, I only got Vision and Hawkeye. And I don't plan to get the other four. 
The other four on this wave are Black Panther, based on the Walmart exclusive vibranium suit, but now in just regular black. Uh, ben Riley Scarlet Spider with a new unmasked head, which is a Peter Parker head with blonde hair, which is perfect. Uh, Ant-Man in the classic Hank Pym costume, which is way too skinny for Hank Pym, in my personal opinion. And because I already have Black Ant, which is a straight repaint of, I'm not really jazzed about getting another version of that figure. And then Wasp in her blue costume, which was part of the Marvel Legends variant that was so stupidly hard to get because it wasn't produced in mass quantities in Toy Biz days, so it's kind of giving people a chance to get that costume again. But I didn't get any of those. I got Vision and Hawkeye. Which, me not being a huge Avengers guy, really kind of surprising. Hawkeye was because I had the Odin Wave one that was missing the quiver because uh, I bought it loose. I didn't like the metal arm. I just like this one. It's more classic Hawkeye. It works for me. Um, I like the wrist joint on the bow hand. Vision, I mean, look, let's, just, let's he's a four out of five. But Vision here, this is this is a figure I wasn't expecting. They've already made like modern Vision. And, you know, all new, all different vision, and the white vision, and MCU vision. This was the last one. This is the one I wanted the most. I wanted the high collar. I wanted the classic look. For him being metallic painted and all my favorite body mold, that's just perfect. Thank you, Hasbro. This is what I've been asking for since I started collecting this line. It was a very classic vision that was very good. It also comes with an Ultron head. I don't know if to use the Ultron head on since there hasn't been an Ultron in a few years. But he does come with that. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5, regardless of anything you may say, like, oh, he should have open hands. I'm fine. 5 out of 5 for this figure being basically exactly what I wanted. This year, Marvel Legends introduced two new sublines. The first being Ultimate Riders, or Ultimate Marvel Legends, or Deluxe. Ultimate Riders is what I'm going with. It's not marked on the package, so I really can't say. Starting with Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze. Now, the original Ghost Rider Johnny Blaze release, seen just over there on that bike, uh, did not come with a bike, did not come with a chain. It was a very standard, here's a Ghost Rider, chains wrapped around his chest. Cool new, cool black costume. Uh, it was released as part of the Hobgoblin wave, which was a Spider-Man wave. Wonderful figure. I love that. I was happy. I just didn't have a bike, which is why I bought an old Toy Biz one. Then Hasbro's like, yo, so I know you already bought a bike and everything, but what if we give you a new bike that actually has working tires, isn't technically a stand, has an actual like turning radius on the, the front part, uh, comes with a new chain with a flame effect, and we're gonna paint the skull so it looks like an actual skull, not just a clear piece of plastic, and it's gonna have that classic blue look you're gonna like because you like that when blue is used for black because it reminds you of old classic comics. And that's how I bought a new Ghost Rider. And he's a five out of five, like no doubt. This is definitely the winner of the first wave of Ultimate Riders. Um, we'll look at the other one in a minute, but I just wanted to like appreciate this chain. The only thing I don't like about the chain is it does droop over time due to uh, gravity, but hey, if you never got the original Ghost Rider, this is the one to get. Even if you got the original Ghost Rider, this is the one to get. Absolutely never pass up on this figure. And now all I want is for Hasbro to add more Ghost Riders. I want Danny Ketch. I want Alejandro Jones. I want Robbie Reyes with his car. That one's a little bit of a long shot, but has it or something, Comic-Con it, I don't know, just give us the car. I want more Ghost Riders now. In the complete opposite spectrum of Ghost Rider, we have Black Widow, his wave mate. Also the figure that was going for $10 on Amazon from its normal 40 Black Widow comes with a neat looking motorcycle that I don't know what to do with, honestly. It's, why did I buy this then? Um, I wanted a modern Black Widow. I wasn't very happy with the Vintage Wave one. I wanted a modern one. This one has two new head sculpts, but no weapons. I gave her the guns. For, I gave her one of the guns from the casual Deadpool, and I'm happy. Like she's gonna fit my Avengers shelf. She's the Black Widow I wanted, but overall as a package, she's not that great. So I'm gonna give her a three out of five. Um, she's just okay. The sole Ultimate Rider from Wave Two is Logan. Uh, also known as Wolverine. Now this Logan is the uh, tank top with the jeans, which is kind of like a very classic look for Logan. Um, I associate a lot with the Hugh Jackman version. Uh, this one's all right. Um, I think one of the things that I noticed is the bike is the same as Ghost Riders with the added saddlebags in the back uh, and the removed skull, of course. And the Wolverine is a new mold, but he does share a lower torso from Old Man Logan. Uh, now, what's really cool is they did paint the arm on, or the arm hair on his arms, which I really like. But it doesn't continue onto the hands and it doesn't continue onto the chest where I think like if you're gonna go for a hairy wolverine just go all out having it just on the arms looks a little weird and the two heads are kind of strange so this one with the eye patch not a big fan I want the patch head on a bodysuit but you know I can't put it on a normal suit body It'll look weird too tall and lanky so 
you know, it is what it is. I am really happy to get this, but I never saw it at retail. I waited for it to hit sale on Amazon, and I finally picked one up. Um, but, you know, it's it's a Wolverine I really wanted to have this incarnation of the character, but not necessarily one that kind of totally gives you the whole package. I think the head is the biggest problem. What I've done on my display is actually swapped in the head from the Vintage Wave Wolverine, and I think that looks a lot better overall. So overall, it's a 4 out of 5. It's a really good set, but I would have liked, I think, uh, maybe a new unmasked head, more like this kind of look, but with a cowboy hat. Cowboy hat kind of would have put the cherry on the top, but still, nice set, four out of five. Talk MCU, 10th anniversary, whatever you want to call it. This was a line that kind of broke me on the MCU figures, I think, because it just became unattainable. If you only collect MCU figures, this was a godsend, because you usually only get like a couple figures away a year, um, not a whole lot, but this was like 10... Oh, 11 different releases. You got Red Skull, you got Ultrons, you got stuff that never got released, like Yellow Jacket, stuff that did get released, but you needed a better version of, like the Hulkbuster. There was a lot of good stuff in here. There was also a lot of stuff that people were like, why is there a Hulkbuster and Hulk 2-pack? That seems redundant, considering how available those figures are. But overall, I think it did a good job of representing the MCU's legacy, while also providing some characters that never got released, like Mandarin was a prototype we saw and never got to see a release of. For me, it kind of like was too much MCU, and I realized that the majority of my collection is comic-based, and that's where I should focus it. So I didn't pick up anything. I didn't pick up anything from the MCU, even the Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket pack I was tempted by. I was tempted by Ronan the Accuser, since I don't have a Ronan for my comic shelf, but I just have to hold out hope for a new release, um, either a re-release of the Build-A-Figure or a brand new one um, someday. But, you know, I, I think that for me, it was kind of my turning point into, I'm going to just be comic faith based for my my collection focus so moving on to exclusives our first one is the vibranium suit black panther which is the all new all different version i don't have any version of this mold it looks nice it i think it is using the sunfire body uh which i do like but i am really happy with my classic black panther from the hit monkey wave that's kind of my black panther the first two pack was from toys r us tied into the black panther movie release but featured two comic book characters that being shuri as black panther and claw now, Claw was released, I think, with Return of Marvel Legends, and I didn't like that figure. Uh, I didn't ever pick him up, but I did want a Claw for my Fantastic Four shelf to go with the Fearsome Four, which I think we're still, eh, we're still kind of short on a couple members there, but Claw is a nice addition. He's on the, you know, Sunfire body that I do talk about a lot as being my favorite. Um, he's a really nice figure, so I give him a 5 out of 5. Shuri is a bit of a cobbled together of parts. No, she does not reuse White Tiger's head, uh, but she does reuse hands uh, from White Tiger. I do like how her color scheme matches the Black Panther that was a Walmart release last year, as well as the Black Panther from the Hit Monkey Wave. So you can kind of merge the two together as being comic Black Panther. But yes, her cape is from Sif, her necklace is new, her belt is from Rogue, which has an X Men logo, which is, uh, it bothers my eyes. And she has the spear from Craven. So not a whole lot new there. While well, Claw is pretty much, you know, that body plus a new arm and a new head. So she gets a 4 out of 5, Claw gets a 5 out of 5. Overall, it's a great 2-pack and one of the last released from dear old Toys R Us. Here we have Vision and Scarlet Witch, also Toys R Us exclusive, later re-released online, much like the Black Panther 2-pack. Uh, this set was really hard to come by. I'm so glad I was able to get one from Toys R Us. I think I used, uh, I think I ordered it from the website. Um, this is our first release of MCU Vision. Uh, Really surprised it took this long. He was in two movies, but this is his third movie for Infinity War before we actually got him. Overall, the figure turned out pretty nice. I'm going to give him a 4 out of 5. I think he could have been a little taller, but I'm glad to finally have him. Scarlet Witch is going to get a 5 out of 5. She's the same exact mold as the Scarlet Witch from the uh, Abomination Wave, but she's got the face printing tech. Her hair's the right color. She's got a better you know, skin complexion. She comes with new effect pieces that look a lot more like her powers than the giant flaming... Hands of Doom that the Abomination Wave version had. Plus, Scarlet Witch is probably one of my favorite MCU characters, so I'm probably going to have a little bias there, but 5 out of 5 for her. Overall, a pretty good 2-pack, and I'm really happy this finally happened, because Scarlet Witch needed an update, and Vision needed a release in general, so I'm really happy with this one. Batman and Stinger. This was also a Toys R Us exclusive. I got it during the Close R Us closing sales, which was insane. Um, but it did come out later online for those that couldn't get it, which was nice. I'm glad Hasbro did do re-releases for all these two packs uh, that came out this year. Um, anyways, this is a great two pack because it lets me put Scott Lang and Cassie Lang into my collection 
Despite not knowing much about the comic versions, to be honest, I'm more familiar with the movie versions, but I do know the history as I've looked up history on the characters. Um, so they can kind of go in, and it's like my Avengers shelf, is, as we'll look at later, is kind of more, it's kind of the MCU stuff, because I know MCU Avengers more than I know comic Avengers. I just don't have as much interest in comic Avengers. That being said, Fantastic Ant-Man, great figure. It's on the new body that I like. Um, it looks awesome. Uh, really good costume design. Five out of five. Uh, Stinger, a little bit of an issue of balance because she's using that teenage body that's got the weird ankles. So she gets a four out of five, but really a good two-pack overall. The Thor, Rocket, and Teen Group pack from Infinity War did not pick up. It was a Toys Us exclusive, moved to online. Just didn't want to track it down, especially once I decided I wasn't really collecting MCU figures anymore. Nothing against it. just didn't need it. There's the Walmart exclusive Thanos. This took months to come out in stores, later than it should have. Once I finally found it, I was super happy. This is the more classic colors. I like the brighter colors. He's got the Infinity Gauntlet. He's got the stern face plus a crazy smile. I like this so much that the Thanos build a figure from 2015. 2015. Um, I actually sold it off. I sold it on eBay uh, to somebody, and I'm you know glad they were able to get it because I you know it's a more modern Thanos. But for me, I didn't need a modern one. I just needed this more classic color, more vibrant metallic painted. I just love this one so much. I was like, I don't need another Thanos. I don't need another Thanos uh, for my comic shelf. So, you know, another Thanos went to somebody else that wanted him more. And I'm glad that happened. Um, so anyways, definitely, definitely, definitely a 5 out of 5. Um, this is just so cool. I want to see more Build-A-Figure re-releases like this where they kind of give them a, a new makeover, or at least re-release them for people that didn't get a chance. Um, and releasing it around the time of Infinity War, smart marketing. Now, Target had a pair of two packs, one with Everest Ro Everett Ross and Killmonger from Black Panther, which I almost picked up, uh, but budgeting and deciding to cut cold turkey in MCU prevented me. Uh, and then one with Falcon and Bucky from Infinity War, which were uh, Falcon was basically the same thing from Civil War. The uh, Bucky was a little different, but I didn't think it looked right. I think there was something off with it. But um, yeah, those two came out at Target. Uh, they also went on clearance at Target. There was a lot of them. Once they finally came out, there was a ton. And sadly, there was no Stanley Build-A-Figure parts. I don't know what happened with that. I wish that came to be. When talking about one of the most surprising releases of the year, it's Marvel Legends Archangel. Revealed at San Diego Comic-Con, released only a few months later. Archangel here was surprising. Uh, this is a mostly, it's mostly the same as the Archangel release during, uh, I think, Hit Monkey Wave, Return Marvel Legends time. He had doled out wings, while the X-Force version in a Comic-Con set had the shiny ones we see here. Um, this one has a more brighter color scheme. It's not as dark and drab. It also has, like I said, the shiny wings. Plus it comes with alternate heads, including this Adam Warlock head painted to be, you know, an unmasked Warren. Uh, it works great. He's got, you know, three heads. I think it's total, no, it's total four heads. Um, he's got masked, death head, uh, unmasked, normal, unmasked, crazy. And then also a claw for Apocalypse. So he actually comes with a lot, and he's a $30 figure. So it does accommodate that, I think, with the accessory count, plus the wings and the paint. Um, I definitely feel like it was totally worth $30. It was a shared exclusive, pop up at GameStop, showed up on Big Bad Toy Store, um, all over the place. So there was definitely a lot of ways to get him. And I'm so happy it happened, because I don't think it could have happened in a normal wave anymore. I did back then, not so much now. Plus all the bonuses just made it all worth it. He gets a 4 out of 5. Here we have the AIM Troopers 2 pack, a shared exclusive uh, that did retail for 50 bucks at GameStop, which was a little crazy. I got mine for 25% uh, off because they were having a sale the day this came out. Um, this 2 pack is much like the Hydro Trooper 2 pack from last year, where it's two different trooper variants for the same organization with a ton of extra accessories to customize. So if you've got multiple AIM packs, you can make six or seven, eight, nine different figures. Like you. You have options. Um, I like the Hydra Troopers as well. I didn't get them last year because I couldn't get them at Toys R Us, but I got them through Amazon this year, and I was really happy with those. Uh, I do think Trooper packs like this are awesome, especially if, you know, for me, I just wanted a couple Hydra guys and a couple AIM guys. Well, one two-pack gives me two distinct different figures that work for the same organization, so it gives me some armies to go behind certain characters. I'm hoping we get a MODOK in the future. That'd be nice, or if I can get a deal on the Toy Biz one. But these guys are definitely awesome. Five out of five. Here we have the GameStop exclusive Gamerverse Spider-Man. This is based on the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 game, which is excellent and I highly recommend it. And it's really cool. It came with the web effects, came with alternate hands, has the uh, Sunfire body mold that I love. Um, this is a really excellent figure. This is a Spider-Man that I think fits for this body. I think Spider-Man in general would fit with this body and I want to see more 
done with it. Um, this is definitely cool. I want to see more Marvel Legends based on the game. I'm not the only one that says that. So hopefully, uh, you know, Hasbro will hook us up with that in the future. So here we have the Amazon exclusive X-Men Days of Future Past Marvel Legends box set. This is one of the coolest and unexpected releases of the year. This was first, the box was seen firstly in a Toys R Us video before their store's closure and bankruptcy and everything. Um, and then we found out about it later on that it was going to be coming out at Amazon. And from the packaging art, we determined it was probably going to be a re-release of the Marvel Universe Sentinel with a new Wolverine. As new Wolverine isn't totally new. Um, in fact, he has no new parts whatsoever. Uh, most of him is the Old Man Logan body, uh, which is, you know, it's actually some different shoes from the Biker Wolverine. And then he's got the gun here, which is a similar gun that we've seen in other releases with the gun holster. Plus the hands are just painted brown, they're not technically sculpted as gloves. And the head is the Biker Wolverine head with some gray. I think this works better for an old, angry, Days of Future Past Wolverine. Not so much the younger Logan that the figure that this originally came with worked as. So this Wolverine's kind of a 3 out of 5. He's a nice put together figure to make a Days of Future Past Wolverine. I do like that. Um, now, of course, the Sentinel is the main focus here. The set's $100, so if you think about it, $20 for Wolverine, $80 for Sentinel, not too bad. This guy's like 16 inches tall. He's huge. Uh, he's the same size as the Toy Biz build a figure He's not a new mold. He has all the same articulations as the original, though the head I found sticks a little bit more. Um, for those that don't know, this was part of the Marvel Universe, which was a 4-inch scale line. As you can see, this works for 6-inch scale, too. Uh, there was a Comic-Con release that was a dark purple... Uh, it was supposed to be more classic color, but it was still darker. And then the modern one, which was blue and silver, which was at retail, which I have, which I misplaced somehow. Don't ask me how, it just happens. Um, but this one here is a, a similar re-release. Uh, there's no mold changes, and we didn't lose the lights and sounds. Destroy. Which is amazing. I thought the lights were gone just based on how the eyes were painted. But the light, lights are still there, all the sounds are still there. Fantastic. If you've been wanting a Sentinel, or if you've been wanting more Sentinels, they haven't been too affordable because this version goes for a lot of money, like the Toy Biz one does as well. So getting this re-release is awesome, and I'm really happy it happened. Plus the box it came in was beautiful. There's pictures of it online. Overall, I'm really happy this set. The Sentinel definitely gets a 5 out of 5. I love this figure when it was released in Marvel Universe. I love it released as Marvel Legends. It just accentuates an X-Men display so perfectly. And having this, plus the other one, when I eventually, you know, figure out where I put it, is going to make a nice display. I don't really need more Sentinels beyond this. And I'm hoping that the Marvel Masterworks Galactus, also from Marvel Universe, can get a re-release next year through Amazon. Since this thing sold so freaking well that they kept selling out and couldn't keep it in stock and only put it on sale, I think, I don't know, it was like a month or more after it came out. So I'm really happy with this. I'm really excited to see if we can get, you know, Galactus next year. I think a lot of people are looking forward to that, as that Marvel Masterworks Galactus goes for more than this Sentinel does for the Marvel Universe releases. Um, so hopefully Hasbro gets that. Um, plus we can get a cool new, you know, Herald of Galactus packed in with them. Um, maybe a Terror actually released. That'd be kind of neat. But anyways, uh, definitely, definitely happy with this. This is one of the highlights of the year. So rounding out our Marvel Legends for the year, we have Mr. Fantastic. This is the first of the four Walgreens exclusives we got this year. They really ramped it up, and they made them more available online than ever. I was actually ordered two of these online before I ever saw them in store. Mr. Fantastic was a little harder to track down than I thought. Um, I actually did manage to get one, and he looks fantastic. Um, I do say there are some drawbacks. I think his, uh, torso, his new torso makes his legs look a little short. Um, but overall, I like that they gave him a new torso. They didn't make him super bulked up. And I do like the arms. Uh, they're got bendy wire inside of them, and I use this to the heat dryer to get into some funky poses. Um, but Mr. Fantastic is finally here, so we have three of the four members of the Fantastic Four. He gets a four out of five. Next up is the Silver Surfer. Now this is a character that a lot of people love. He's been released a few times, but he hasn't had a modern Marvel Legend. And this one's perfect. Uh, this has got, you know, very good head sculpt. He's on the Sunfire body, which like I said is my favorite body. And he's got a board that's a re-release, I think, from a previous Silver Surfer, which is fine by me. I think the only detractor I have is that there's only one foot peg, and there's no stand for him to fly on. But I do kind of like having him in this kind of like he's landing sort of pose, uh, which I do really like. So while the board can be tweaked, I think that overall this is still a really good figure. He also does come with those same energy effects, like the one on Shocker up there, in yellow for his power cosmic, plus open hands and closed hands, and, you know, the karate chop hands. So he's got plenty of accessories. This is definitely a 5 out of 5. 
This is what everyone was waiting for, the thing, the final member of the Fantastic Four that completes the team. And it wasn't until I had this figure that I really felt like I was getting new Fantastic Four figures. I've been buying all of them since they started coming out, and this is so nice to get. This is my favorite Marvel superhero team, and they're finally complete. Uh, the thing here comes with two open hands, two closed hands, a head here with a closed, more stern expression, and a head with a more angry... Uh, teeth grinning expression. His articulation's fantastic. He's got single jointed elbows that work as well as double joints. He's got a nice torso ball joint. He's all 100% new mold with all that rocky texture. I love this figure. I really do. And it's probably my favorite Marvel Legend of the Year. Five out of five. Slipping in just before the end of the year, just like Medusa did last year, we have Magic. Magic is one of the X-Men characters, sister to Colossus. She is fairly popular, and I'm happy to see that she got another re-release. She was originally released in the Book of Ashanti back in 2016, you can see that in 16, uh, and that is a comic high school set that's gotten more expensive. They changed things up, they changed the story to yellow, they gave her normal eyes, and they packed her with a ton of accessories. She's got like a repaint of Lockheed, she's got Ghost Rider skull as a flaming accessory, she's got Thor lightning, she's got Scarlet Witch swirls, she's got all those magic and stuff. They pack the figure out with a ton of accessories that I can use with different figures. So it's really great. I'm going to give her a 4 out of 5. Uh, she's a really solid figure. Of course, rounding up the figures I did not purchase this year, the Netflix Defenders box set for Comic-Con. This one was a 5-pack that included uh, Matt... No, it wasn't Matt Murdock. It was Daredevil with a Matt Murdock head, Jessica Jones without a jacket, Luke Cage with a red shirt, Iron Fist, and Colleen Wing. Now, I know Colleen Wing and Iron Fist were the kind of exclusives there, that really pushed the pack for people, and they are frustrated that those never came out again, but Iron Fist was the least popular Netflix show, the first to be canceled, this is on the first. Uh, I didn't have any need to do it, because I'm not a big fan of the Netflix shows in general. Um, I tried watching them, I just didn't get into them, and so I didn't really pick it up. Uh, we also have the Marvel Unlimited exclusive subscription figure for the year, which was Venomized Punisher. Would have liked to seen some extra stuff to it, like uh, I know some people were swapping parts around and made him look really cool. Um, he could have used a few extra accessories, but not a bad figure. Not one that would force me to sign up for a Marvel Unlimited subscription. I might do that someday, but you know, it's going to have to be a really cool figure, like the rescue figure, something neat like that. Um, we also have uh, a couple of two packs. We have a Luke Cage and I don't remember her actual name, Claire Temple. Luke Cage and Claire Temple from the Luke Cage series. Luke Cage has a yellow shirt. Claire Temple has her, like, night nurse gloves, which is kind of neat. Um, cool two-pack for those Netflix people out there. Another way to get Luke Cage outside the box set. And then there was a Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen two-pack from Into the Spider-Verse, where they're both repainted to be reminiscent of the movie. Miles gets an extra energy effect and the new logo. Gwen gets the kind of ballerina slipper look to her legs. It's a good way to release the two characters in time for the movie without putting them into normal ways, making collectors that already have them buy them again, since they are fairly recent figures. Um, overall, I think there was a lot of great stuff this year in terms of re-releases for new collectors to get stuff that older collectors may have without making older collectors rebuy everything all the time. Uh, there's a lot of variety, a lot of great stuff. I really feel like this year was the year that X-Men finally joined the line. They've been there for a couple ways, so a couple years, but... We basically got three X-Men waves this year, plus all the exclusives. This was a great year for Marvel Legends. So my top 10 kind of merged to a top 15. And yes, there's 19 figures in front of you, let me explain. First off, um, because of the nature of Scarlet Witch, Thanos, the Sentinel, Archangel, uh, those four are technically just updated re-releases. The Sentinel has the new classic colors, Archangel's mostly the same as the original. Scarlet Witch is a new paint job. And Thanos is a new paint job with a couple new parts. I have trouble codifying those into the top 15 running simply because they are mostly re-releases. That being said, those are four of my favorite figures of the year. So, <laughs> there's that. Um, now, technicality-wise, I guess I could go by numbers to create this top 10 easier, but this is kind of the top... The top 15 in my heart, this is like the figures that I love the most. Um, absolutely, number one is The Thing. Uh, this is the figure I've been waiting for since we started the Fantastic Four. Uh, he is absolutely awesome. Uh, we also have the Silver Surfer here, one of my favorite characters ever since I was a kid. Um, really awesome. I think he's number two. 
Everybody else just kind of falls somewhere between 3 and 15. Um, but, you know, Scott Lang Ant-Man, Ghost Rider, Omega Red, Dr. Octopus, Mysterio, PS4 Spider-Man, uh, Apocalypse, Monster Venom, Sauron, Vision, uh, 90s, uh, Armored Wolverine, Spider-UK, and Psylocke. They're all figures I really wanted, and they're all figures that I love so much. So this is kind of like, <laughs> it's the top 19 of my heart. Um, if I want to make it a top 20, we'll throw a Koya in here. Uh, so it's the top 20 of my heart. So we've looked at a lot of Marvel Legends so far. How about we take a closer look at my overall collection and display? So as it stands, this is where Marvel Legends display is going to be for this year. Uh, of course, it's all going to change because new figures come out next year. Um, this is the Avengers shelf. Uh, this is where I just gonna have all the Avengers. There's some room to grow here. There's some Avengers coming out next year I want. So it'll expand, it'll grow, it'll change. But this is where it's at right now. Like Songbird, she's just kind of there. If I get a Jean Grey to put that effect on, she's kind of gone. Black Widow's not keeping her bike forever, but no, it's there. Uh, over here we have the Defenders, which is mostly just the Defenders 4-pack plus, you know, Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange and Namor and such. Uh, here's the Avengers-ish villains, so like Hydra and like those guys and then AIM and then Abomination and then there's Vengeance and Ghost Rider, which I have just chilling there because... You know, when you have Toy Biz bikes that have wall mounts, just, just go for it. Um, this is the Misplaced Heroes, which is just Hellcat, Black Knight, and Gwenpool, uh, along with S.H.I.E.L.D. agents like Mockingbird and Nick Fury and friends. Uh, this is the Symbiotes. Z -z 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 -z. There's a lot of Symbiotes. Um, there's probably too many, but, you know, there's a whole Symbiote section. Uh, here we have the Daredevil shelf. Uh, Toy Biz Kingpin's standing in for the Hasbro one whenever that happens. He should be able to fit. We'll see. Should be fun. Uh, the goblins. It's just, you know, goblins. Uh, this is more dark heroes. Just kind of like the edgier stuff. Uh, here is the spot of us. So it's just like, you know, Spider-Man. Including Sim Sim, because he's canon now, I guess. Uh, Spider-Man villains. Yeah, Prowler and Black Hair there. Another kind of gray-lined sometimes. But this whole display is basically centered around Doc Ock. So the tentacles have somewhere to go, and yeah, it just looks fantastic. I want Scorpion now. Uh, here is the X-Force slash Deadpool core. Uh, mostly his lady Deadpool just didn't have a place to go, so she went with the X-Force. Here is the X-Men shelf, uh, which we got some crazy stuff here. Like, I put Sauron in front of the window, because that way the light shines through him. Plus I have UV protected windows, so I don't have to worry about fading or anything. But, you know, basically it's kind of like more of your, like, more evil mutants, and then more of the X-Men are kind of here... I always pair up like Jean Grey, uh, Phoenix, and Dark Phoenix as like a your your path your your future is coming after you in the the background. Of course, the Sentinel is a primary piece with Wolverine, um, Archangel here. I put him up on a stand so he can fly. Um, we have Apocalypse nearby. You know, I kind of like to pair up characters so it's like you know Cyclops with Jean and Lorna and Alex are together and Deadpool and Cable and Cable and Hope and you know. Laura and Old Man Logan and such like that. So it's kind of like a nice pairing. Like, you know, Sasquatch will come out of there once we have an Alpha Flight thing. Uh, here's my Fantastic Four shelf. My pride and joy. The team is complete. We're all together. And there's Herbie. And I made a Johnny Storm with a second Mr. Fantastic and a Chris Evans Captain America head. Because, you know. Uh, She-Hulk's here because Fantastic Four. Silver Surfer's here because Fantastic Four. And humans are here because there's only two of them. And then the Fantastic Four introduced him. Uh, classic Namor's here. Doctor Doom is the older one. I still want a new one. Half of a Frightful Four back there. And an old Mole Man, because I don't think they're ever going to make a new one. Uh, up here, we got, like, the Guardians of the Galaxy to the left, sort of in the middle, the Nova Corps, um, Thanos and the Black Order, um, and then, uh, kind of, well, they're, they're Asgardians plus Dormammu and Scroll Giant Man, because didn't have a, a good place for them. <laughs> that was just kind of where they went because they're tall and they didn't fit anywhere else. Uh, that's all going to have to change because two more Black Order members have to go in there and there's some other cosmic stuff happening. So that's the main display. Um, that's pretty much what's there. Overall, I think we had a great year for Marvel Legends. My display has gotten packed to the brim. Um, next year is going to be interesting. I'm going to end up buying two Kingpins because I want to get a Shadow King and a Kingpin. There's a Professor X and a hover chair that's got to fit with all that. Uh, you can definitely see the X-Men, I think, dominate this year, uh, at least for me. 
I think the MCU and the X-Men had the most amount of figures for specific groups, but this X-Men shelf, every all my X-Men stuff fit on one, like, smaller shelf, like one of those. Now I have it, like, sprawled across the biggest shelves, plus an extra quarter for X-Force, so... Ugh, I love it. I love getting this much X-Men stuff, and... Yeah, that's all shift and change, and it'll look different next year, and that's all. That is all for Marvel Legends for me this year. I uh, hope I didn't bore you guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below anything I can change and do better next year. Uh, I definitely would appreciate any and all feedback. Until next time, this is not saying, see y'all in 2019.